Good morning. I'm Matt Randolph. And I'm Sarah Nyer. And we are the pastors of the Presbyterian Churches of Mount Joy and Donegal. We are also joined this morning by Dennis DeZort as our church musician, and we are here in the historic sanctuary of the Donegal Church, and we are so glad that you have come here uh, virtually to join us in worship. Now let us take some time to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Sisters and brothers, let us gather together with glad and generous hearts. For many signs and wonders are being done among us. Let us break bread together and share our lives in common. Let us give what we can to all who have needs, so that all people, no matter who they are, may regard us with goodwill. Let us devote ourselves to our prayers and to the gospel. For in this way, God will add to our numbers every day. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we ask that you be with us during this time. We give you thanks for the opportunity to gather together across the internet and our own homes uh, so that we all can be together 
united in your Holy Spirit. Bless this time, O oh God. Be with us in uh, our confessions, in the reading of Scripture, in the hearing of your word for us. Be with us and hear our petitions. And, O oh Lord, we ask that you rest upon all of us. Open our hearts for this time of worship. Hear our praise. Guide us, O God. And we put this time into your hands as we pray in your Son's holy name. Amen. Friends, inasmuch as God is our shepherd, let us not fear, but confess our sin that God may restore our souls. Trusting in God's love in Jesus Christ, unite your heart with me as we corporately confess our sin. Then in the time of silence, let us confess privately. Then we will receive the assurance of our forgiveness as one. Let us pray. O God, creator of the heavens and maker of each small thing, what a wondrous universe you have spread before us. Each day overflows with the richness of life, with growing green and bursting blossoms, with relationships which nurture and challenge, with missions accomplished and justice to be done. Each day is full of your meaning. And yet many times we do not see this. With much around us to be done, we complain of boredom, or we are so busy we lose track of your presence and calling. Too often we scurry to and fro without appreciation, delight, or much sense of purpose. Call us, O oh God, out of emotional poverty, into the richness of life lived in love. Move us toward you and one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, the promise of faith is that if we entrust ourselves to the one who judges justly, we need not feel threatened, for we will be returned to righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And this morning I'll be reading out of the Common English Bible. Hear God's word to you. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They, don't, they won't follow a stranger but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. Amen. This passage from chapter 10 is a parable, or a story used by Jesus to teach. This parable is meant to teach in response to a situation that has already unfolded in chapter 9. 
In chapter 9, a young man who was born blind is healed by Jesus and given the gift of sight. It's a miracle. Imagine his joy at being able to see. Shouldn't everyone around him be joyful for him? But unfortunately, this is not so. What is miraculous is questioned by the Pharisees, who really don't like Jesus anyway. They question the young man. They question his parents to try to come to an understanding. But each time, they do not come up with an answer that they can be happy with. In a, in a way, it is symbolic that Jesus is healed, uh, has healed a man's physical sight, and yet those around him, the Pharisees, cannot see Jesus for who he really is. The Pharisees are suffering from the malaise of spiritual blindness. Who really is blind here? A passage about shepherding, like in chapter 10, is meant to show God's care and concern for us. It is Jesus who leads us in a true manner like a shepherd king. Jesus is the one who leads us into a life that is full of the things that God desires for us, that we will be like sheep who have good pasture and protection we need. The faithful are the ones who will recognize the shepherd, Jesus, by what Jesus does. He calls, we are like sheep who listen and follow. In this analogy, Jesus is the one who looks out for us. The world is a place full of thieves and bandits and all sorts of dangers, but with Jesus, there is a life in fullness. Wake up, this passage says to us. There's more here than the order of the way things have always been done. Miracles are happening and great things are being done. Don't get stuck in the minute details of why this can or cannot be. Don't miss out on this potential that God is laying out before us. God wants good for us, although it may not look what, like what we originally thought it would look like. There are ways we can get hung up on things that act as blinders and cause spiritual blindness. We become blind to God's word in the world. Yes, in this world of ours, there are many things that, can, that we can get hung up on that blind us to God's work through Christ in and around our lives. For a moment, let's take the COVID-19 pandemic out of the equation. In so many ways, this world of ours has been running us rampant. So much of our time and energy are spent creating and maintaining these, these schedules that we have built. And as much as our schedules have been put on hold for a little bit, the hope is to return to them, right? And when we do, we will be returning to work, errands, personal activities, our kids' or grandkids' activities. At the end of the day, the day has all but utterly consumed us. The small amount of time that we have left is spent doing something like sitting on the couch and watching Netflix, also that we can take our brain off of the day before the next one starts. Then don't get me started on politics. Our society has become so divided Tribalism has infested itself in our life together so that it utterly consumes every aspect of our lives. We find it hard to even talk to the person next door about what's going on in the world. Our leaders, who used to disagree but still break bread with one another, would find a way to forward together. Now they absolutely refuse to talk to one another, let alone break bread with one another. You can't talk about any current event anymore without it being political. Even within our current situation with the pandemic, the language of whether to open or stay closed is visceral and fueled by politicians' election campaigns. And then there is the pandemic to which we are trying our best to navigate. So many have lost work. So many are burning the candle at both ends to maintain their jobs and also monitor their children's homeschooling. So many are in isolation as they shelter in place. There are so many feelings that we continue to hold in the weeks of this new world we, in which we live. Fear, 
anger, uncertainty, angst, grief. And all of these are completely valid as one worries about how to feed their family. As one looks at the actions of their neighbors in bewilderment, as they brood over questions like, how much longer? What if there's a resurgence? What will the end result of all this be? My point, though, with all of this is that any of it, our previous lives, the politics of our society, or the, our lives in the midst of this pandemic can all be consuming. And when we do that, whether it is intentional or not, we create an idol in our lives. Just as the Pharisees were, were blinded to God's work through Jesus, because they were all consumed by the legalism they created in the Holy Scriptures, we too are blinded by God's work through Jesus Christ as we let any of the idols we create or in or our lives, and we let that consume us. For when we do such a thing, we miss out on the life God wants for us, the life God intends for us. We've heard about the things that can be idols and can cause spiritual blindness. Once we have been opened up to seeing God's word in the world, we can begin to see what God has in mind for us. From verse 10, I, Jesus, come that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the grace God has for us, the hope in a life lived in fullness. This place characterized as a good pasture is a safe place, a place filled with people who owe their allegiance to the same shepherd who looks out for us. Those who would steal, kill, and destroy do not have a place in this pasture. So what does it look like when we are following our shepherd and living into a reality that is coming into being where there are no people who steal or kill or destroy? We live as people who see. Not necessarily with our physical eyes, we're not talking about our physical sight, but rather our spiritual sight. When we can see God's word, word in the world, we can see that there is potential hope through God's grace for the world. We want our surroundings to be a place where the things that make life dangerous for people are non-existent. We want to get rid of thievery and violence and destruction. We want to be generous, life-giving, and to be those who build up and maintain what God's word has been doing. This means there are things we have that we have a vision for and are willing to be a part of. We're willing to work to make that vision happen. A generous people, we take part in professions and organizations where we make gifts of our time and resources for the benefit of others. A church is one of those places. That's why mission is a major part of what we do. It's why we've been responding to the requests for the food bank recently. We see the value in investing in the well-being of our community. But it's not just the organized church. We recognize that there are a lot of other avenues to volunteer in our community and places that need leadership. There are professions and jobs that work in service of other people. We're seeing their commitment, especially during these times. We recognize what we have and we give some of it back. We are generous with our time, our gifts, and our talents. Being a part of the sheep in that community is maintaining that community. How do we do that? Through our relationships, especially now. There's a lot of talk about how social isolation uh, or quarantine causes anxiety and loneliness. Let's isolate ourselves through distance, but let's please continue to call one another or FaceTime or Zoom or any of those other acceptable ways of maintaining that contact with one another. But it's also the little things that we do in community to show that we care. Now someone knows you're paying attention when you remember their birthday or think to send them that funny thing that you saw on the internet. Another part of that vision is always listening for the voice of our shepherd, to recognize that it is always about God's will, what God's word is doing and knowing that God is up to something even when it feels like there's no hope. 
God has not given up. It may just be an unfamiliar uh, situation or something we have never encountered before. But God is working for us to live a life in the fullness of God's grace. God is indeed working for us to, to live in the fullness of God's grace. And in this passage, there is a profound statement of Jesus. I am the gate. It is a statement that is worthy of our attention. For what is a gate? It is a device that is used to let things in and out of an area. In terms of the parable of our passage, the security of the sheep pen, the ability to be a part of the shepherd's flock. Now, many times in the past when people, the church, has focused on this statement of Jesus, it has been used with the vision of the gate being closed to protect those on the inside, the privileged few striving for moral purity from those on the outside, the masses bent on moral corruption. As comfortable as this may be for those who see themselves on the inside of the gate, a closed gate is not the intention of the shepherd. It is not the intention of Christ for us to be able to live our lives in, in the fullness of God's grace in such a way. For the vision of the gate closed breeds exclusivity, subjugation, and brokenness. Everything antithetical to a life lived in the fullness of God's grace. So no, actually we need a vision of the gate open. The shepherd holding the gate open so that us, the weak, the vulnerable, the idol creators, the sinners, so that us, in all of our failings and misgivings, in all of our busyness, our politics, our fear, and our anxieties, our blindness, can, can see Christ at work in our lives and dare to live the lives God intends for us. Lives lived in the fullness of God's grace. St. Augustine, from whom our beloved John Calvin drew uh, to build our Reformed theology, likened the church as a hospital for sinners to bring in the weak and the vulnerable, those who reek of sin, Yes, the gate has to be open wide to us in Jesus Christ. Or honestly, who would otherwise be worthy to enter? Retired Presbyterian minister Cindy Jarvis renders Jesus alone as the gate so that in the end, every disparate flock will be, and will be one in him. So yes, our sisters and brothers, now that the gate is open wide to you by the love of Jesus, know that you are called as sheep of the shepherd. Know that we have a new opportunity each day to realize God's love for you and live in the fullness of God's grace shedding the idols that blind us to Christ's work, and opening our lives to others in the fullness of God's grace. As the gate, God's grace has been opened wide for us. For the world needs grace so bad, especially right now. Our world needs to know that they are not alone in their struggles. Even in the midst of socially distancing, we need to know God's love. And it's up to us as God's children to share it, to enact it, to look out for one another, to care for one another. Despite who they are, despite the idols that separate us in the best of times. For thanks be to God that the shepherd holds the gate open wide to us all. It is easy to become consumed by the things or idols that blind us to God's work in and around us. However, Jesus has come so that we may see God's love for us. 
and to see that the gate is open wide for us, for us to live our lives to the fullest through Christ's love. Amen. Amen. Sarah, what concerns from the Mount Joy Church need to be lifted up in prayer? Well, we want to continue to pray for Larry and for Carl uh, as we've been praying for them for a while. They have been showing gradual improvements, and in fact, it's a sign of improvement that, that Larry will be well enough to move to another uh, care facility to continue in his recovery. Uh, we also want to pray for Janet, uh, who fell in her home uh, this past week and is in the hospital. So prayers for her. We also want to pray for the families of Norma Alborn, uh, who died recently from COVID-19. And we also want to pray for the family of the Reverend Dr. Walter Mueller, uh, who was not a member of either congregation, but he did have um, some affiliation with the First Mount Joy Church uh, later on uh, when they moved to the greater Mount Joy area and they were visited by members of the community. Um, he, he suffered greatly and his family is rejoicing that he's now uh, with his Savior and we just want to hold the family in prayers. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Walter Mueller was a, um, had a fruitful career as a pastor and a scholar and a teacher. The Donegal Church wants to continue to lift up Dan in prayer. Uh, he is doing better uh, as he was suffering from uh, pneumonia. Uh, but he's still not quite out of the woods yet, uh, and he, if you remember, he's also uh, been diagnosed with a rare form of, of cancer, and uh, the surgery that he had went well, and his, his doctors uh, feel that they got uh, all the cancer uh, that, uh, that the surgery intended, uh, and, but he's going to start radiation treatments, so we would be continuing to pray for, for him. Uh, and his family as they stand beside him. Uh, we have a number of uh, individuals who are either furloughed or laid off uh, from work, and we want to lift all those people up uh, within our congregations and also our community who are facing uh, such a need. Uh, and then also, lastly, one of our members here, uh, their, their father was just taken to the hospital yesterday uh, with COVID-19 uh, COVID like symptoms. So we don't know if he's tested positive yet for, for COVID-19, uh, but obviously he is uh, portraying those symptoms and, and is, is suffering greatly. So um, 
So prayers for all those who are also uh, suffering from uh, the pandemic uh, that, is, that is going on uh, around us and all the healthcare workers on the front lines uh, and the, uh, the doctors and nurses that are putting themselves into harm's way every day to, to, to do their jobs and to care for us. Uh, our leaders who are trying their best to guide us uh, and be informed by, by science. Uh, we also pray for um, um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the individuals uh, uh, in our community um, who are hungry and, and need, uh, need assistance. So we, we pray that the church will rise up and, and do their best uh, to, to serve them out of love. So, if you will now, let us uh, unite our hearts and minds as we, as we pray to our God for the general needs of our neighbors uh, and, and our community. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, you are our shepherd. In this dangerous world, let us hear your voice and come and go through your gate. We pray for the whole church, that we may be devoted to your word and to the, the universal fellowship you call us to, the fellowship of being generous to all who have need. We pray for our earth, though, God. We pray for green pastures and still waters, we pray that you may restore them to the goodness and purity that, that they had at the time you created them. Oh Lord, we pray for the people of this world. We pray for our nation and all nations and leaders, especially as everyone all across the globe are trying the, their best to lead their people in such a time as this. We pray for your wisdom and that your peace may govern all so that no one will fear. O oh Lord, we pray for all those in need, for those in, in want, for those who are ill, for those who are dying. We pray that we may be the banquet that you have set before them as we anoint them as we feed them, as we comfort them, as we care for them, as we pray for them in your name. We also pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. May no one ever live in fear, and may we all dwell in your holy presence, assured that you walk beside us in all things. All glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And we pray with the Holy Spirit in your holy church and through your holy Son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are so blessed by a God who loves us. Our tithes and offerings are an opportunity to respond with gratefulness for what God has done. We ask that you prayerfully consider uh, what you might be called to give. We understand that these are hard times. Your offering makes the continuing work of our church possible. Donegal members may send their offerings to the Donegal Church, and Mount Joy members may send their offering to the Mount Joy Church. Thank you. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Sacred Spirit, the Three and the One. May you remember the waters of your baptisms. May God give to you to drink of his cup. 
May the sun ever shine bright upon you, and may the night call down peace. And when you enter into God's household, may the door be open wide to you, so that you may enter into joy. Amen. Amen. Go, Go in, in peace to love and serve the Lord. great to worship with you. And just a reminder before we go, uh, please send us your prayer requests so we can incorporate them into our worship service for next week. And also remember that we are available to you for any reason, uh, just uh, a phone call away or send us a text uh, or even an email uh, to let us know how things are going in your life or something you want our input for. Um, we're available to you. And so with that, uh, we say goodbye. Peace to you. Peace.